today we're installing a Bosch Ultra heat pump. This is not just your plain Jane Bosch. So we're going to be replacing this Rood system with a Bosch five ton on four ton air handler Ultra series heat pump. Let's get to it. This existing Rood system is only about 12 years old, but the installation was not all that great. Even the breakers were not properly sized for this, so we're going to be upgrading those as well. And this outdoor unit uh, was set very unconventionally, so we're going to reset that as well. This is an R410 system, as we see here by the caps, and even connecting to this thing was uh, very challenging. So we're doing a live pump down on this. The system runs, so we're just gonna close valves and pull all the refrigerant back to the unit. Makes it much more efficient on the job just to get this thing out of the way so that we can get moving on that new install. So here's Cadence getting this thing moving out of our way so we can get the new foundation set. Inside at the air handler, we got these covers pulled off to expose the electrical department and the coil and you can see that there's a lot of moisture damage and corrosion inside here and one of these issues is right here this trap was not installed correctly and even though there is a trap there they had left the top open which allowed air to pull in preventing the trap from draining properly. So then this unit was constantly flooding. The homeowner was saying that the lower uh, return box was constantly wet. So that was due to that trap. We threw some taper real quick uh, upon discovering this during a service call to get them going. But ultimately this led to a lot of just corrosion and funk inside this air handler. Here is the brand new Ultra Series 5 ton on 4 ton combination. This is a 19 SEER 2 rated system and it does run on the 454B mildly flammable refrigerant. This system is also capable of communicating so it can be hooked up as 2 wire for the control system. We are resetting the foundation here, so we're tamping the soil and the gravel, and Cadence is taking his good old time setting those pavers for us. Now at the air handler, I am lightening this thing up as much as I can. Uh, since it is fairly simple to pull that coil out, we're just gonna pop that out of there, lighten the air handler up, and that way we can easily pull this air handler off of that return box. Now Cadence is working on installing the electric strip heaters. And so the strip heater that we're using is a standard style strip heater, not a modulating or three stage strip heater. We are going to be wiring this as a single stage since we are relying on the Ultra to be very efficient and effective. Now this particular screw right here is critical. That is a rounded screw to prevent damage to the wiring that's gonna be hidden underneath from these breakers. So it's very critical to use that rounded screw that comes from factory. Now we're setting this new air handler in place. I had already done some pre-measuring and some tweaking on this. Uh, we actually had raised it up and put some rubber feet underneath it to prevent some vibration from translating into the house and the ductwork. That, that air handler weighs around 150 pounds, I believe it is. So by yourself, definitely a little tricky. These Bosch units are made very sturdy built, so they are on the hefty side. So this Ultra has a special strip heater they recommend for it, uh, which is a three-stage system. But the packaging right here, that comes with the air handler, has this pigtail here. So it converts it from a four wire to a two or three wire uh, connection for your strip heater. So you do not have to use the three stage strip heater. I have worked directly with Bosch on this. So they send the pigtail for a reason. You do not have to. If you do use the three stage strip heater, it comes with a voltage sense. Um, there's a little thing there that detects voltage and it has an extra plug that you have to jam into the control board. The control board is just a square plug 
The one on the voltage sense has the two little dimples for it to like lock in. They don't match, but they it does plug in. You have to argue with it. Straight to my Bosch tech rep, and they, they sent him a picture. It's jammed in there. Somehow along the line, there was a miscommunication on which port and which plug to use. So if you use the three stage, it will fit. Just jam it in there, um, and it has that voltage sense uh, built into it. Small plug goes on CS2 back here in the back. There we are. And then our relay plug goes over here to the one that says to heating. It's a CN6. Right there. It will work. But right now we're using a standard strip heater and we're just going to use the adapter cable. Coil temperature sensor to tell when we're up to temperature for that anti-cold start delay. We have a return air temperature sensor. And this is our 454B flammable refrigerant leak detector sensor. So three different sensors on the Ultra. Cadence is now drilling a new hole for us. Didn't really want to drill another hole in these uh, superior walls, but ultimately to finesse this job much nicer, we felt the need to just go ahead and drill another hole. So a quick check of the nitrogen purge and we're off to brazing. We purge into the coil on the liquid side and out of the coil on the vapor side to draw heat out of that coil. Quick installation of that new trap system. I install it sideways just to keep the glue from running down into that clear trap. You wanna make sure that your trap is open on the outlet side and closed on the inlet side. You always wanna make sure your trap is full in the spring, ready for air conditioning. Just doing a quick check on everything here at the outdoor unit. We're gonna have a look at this RSH50 disconnect. This thing does voltage monitoring and it has a surge protector in it. A lot of the issues that we have with control board failures on any inverter is the fact that it's riding at low voltage or high voltage for too long. So we use this RSH50 disconnect by Rector Seal. Awesome disconnect, monitors the voltage for you, shuts it down, gives you a two minute uh, off delay if it's on and off, on and off, and we absolutely love it. Really protects our unit. Everything's looking really good so far. So after initial installation of this, you want to make sure that your dip switches are set correctly. Now from factory, if you're using the communication mode, you should have no issues if you don't change anything. And what that means is if you come in here, there's an SW5-4, it's the fourth one over. If you are using 24 volt connection, from outside to inside, you will need to change that. But if you're just using the factory communicating, the two wire, red and black, then you wanna just leave that alone. So if you change it on the board to 24 volt, it will not come on if you have it hooked up communicating and vice versa. So if you hook it up the four wire, you might even fry it if you didn't switch it to 24 volt. So you have to be very careful what you're doing there during installation. One really nice feature of this Bosch is that, now it's coming on, the startup or initial inrush amperage of these units is about one and a half amps. Compared to the old unit that was in here, you might have had, say, 80 or 90 amps worth of uh, startup amperage. One thing to remember on the new Bosch Ultra, just the Ultra, if you don't hook it up communicating with the two wire, if you don't hook that up, 
you lose the feature of the anti cold start delay in the heating side, which means when you call for heating and you have it hooked up with the four wire or the 24 volt, it will bring the fan on right away. It, they rely on that communicating feature to use the anti cold start delay in the ultra. Uh, you can hook it up four wire, uh, 24 volt, and you can get the anti cold start delay on the plus and the premium. Now, one main reason you would want to go with the Bosch Ultra is because this unit here has a projected output of around 55,000 BTUs at zero to five degrees. So that's its rated capacity at zero to five degrees. It's just unreal the amount of BTUs you're gonna get out of this thing at that low of temperature. This unit is capable down to negative 13. So you're going to be able to use this much more compared to a even just the entry level Bosch that stops at five degrees. So much more capable, much more efficient unit. The outdoor unit has a higher fan center. And so now this is all fan and we can utilize this top portion of coil much more efficiently. So they've redesigned quite a few things here to make this the most efficient model yet.